Hello everybody. In this video I wanted to talk through the process of doing some basic web scraping. So I have an example here which is a website that relates to uh, detention centres. This is um, AVID, uh, an organisation that does visits to detention centres and on their website as well as lots of really interesting content they've got um, a really convenient list of all the detention centres, um, immigration detention centres that are around the UK. And you can see they're listed here, and if I click on one of those and follow it through, it's got a location, it's got the capacity and other bits of useful information, including a map. And uh, the nice thing about this website is if I click through, you'll, it's organised in pretty much the same way. So each page has its own little standard page. So if I wanted uh, the information um, about any of these sites, so the name, the location, contact details, all of that kind of stuff, um, to be able to use in my projects, one of the things I quite like to do is get that data out and maybe put it in a spreadsheet. Um, so I can do a little bit of analysis or store that data in a bit more structured way. Um, and I could, because there's not many of them, I could do a cut and paste here, but this looked like a good opportunity to try a little bit of basic scraping. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a Google Chrome extension called WebScraper.io. It's not the only web scraper, it's certainly not the only web scraper extension that's around, and um, there are some that do things better, some that do things worse. I'm not saying that this is the only thing you should use. Um, it's just a good, uh, solid um, usable extension that does what we want to do and it's a good um, example of what web scraping is all about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the web scraper to basically go to each one of these pages in turn and grab all of the bits of information that might be useful for me. So for example all of the location, the capacity, all of these bits and pieces from each page. And as I say I could do that with a cut and paste, it would take a bit of time um, but by scraping, it gives me a good opportunity to practice how I might automate some of these processes, a bit of computational journalism. So, back to Web Scraper. I'm going to click on Download Free on the Chrome Store. So this is a free extension. And then I'm going to click Add to Chrome. And then Add Extension. And it doesn't take long to install. little message that tells me it's already in, a nice little icon. And I can close that window down. So, back on my page here, I'm going to get ready for scraping the data. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the Web Scraper icon. And you'll see it says, to use Web Scraper, you need to open the developer tools. And it's got the shortcut keys. Um, so you can use those shortcut keys. Or, and I'm on a Mac at the moment, but this works on um, PC as well. If you click the little three dots here, go down to More Tools, then you'll see the option for developer tools. And that should be the same on a Mac, on, on a PC as well. So you click Developer Tools, and you can see at the moment mine opens up underneath. And before I get into a bit of detail about what's going on here, uh, what might happen is when you open um, Web Scraper for the first time, you, you might find your Windows um, splits like this. So with the Developer Tools down the right-hand side and the web page down the left, and this, you can see there's just the straight web page here. Uh, web Scraper won't work if you have the stuff down to the right. So if you click on these three dots here, customize and control rather than these three dots which are the actual browser window options we want the dev options here and then at the top of you click dock to bottom so you can move the developer tools all the way around so just a word on the developer tools basically the this is like being under the bonnet and looking at the engine of the car and uh, this is all the code the html the script the style sheets everything that controls what's appearing in your browser and so if you're a web developer and you want to find out which bit of your page is not working properly or how other people have done it, then there's lots of ways that you can take a peek at the code that people have written. But the bit we're interested in is over here. It's this one, Web Scraper. We click that. Thankfully, things are a little bit more straightforward. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, what Web Scraper calls is a new sitemap. So essentially what we're going to do with Web Scraper is we're going to describe a set of instructions, a direction, a map, if you like, of the website that the scraper can follow to get the information that we want. So the first thing is to click create new sitemap and then create sitemap. And then I'm going to call this IRC info. Now um, web scraper can be a little bit temperamental about capital letters and spaces and stuff like that. I'm not entirely sure why, I'm sure there's a good technical reason for it, but uh, you need some that's why I've gone for all lowercase and that little underscore 
in there. Also, occasionally, um, and I think this might be a Chrome problem more than anything else, sometimes the whole thing kind of seems to freeze. And if it does, then basically it's a close Chrome and start again. As I don't think that's a problem with Web Scraper. I think that's a Chrome problem. Maybe it's just my Chrome. The next thing is where it says start URL. Um, I'm literally just going to cut and paste or copy and paste the URL from the top. So this is the address of the website that I'm looking at now. And then click create sitemap. So we can see now we're at what we call the root. So this is the start of our map. So this is the start point of our little set of directions. And then if I look on the page, this is going to be our next step. What we're going to do is follow each one of these links through and grab the information that we want. So the way that we do that is I click Add New Selector. And I'm going to call this Page Link. And then from this bottom uh, drop down here, you can see lots of different types of things. So these are all the different things on a web page that we can pick up on. Um, so I'm going to take link here because that's what I'm interested in and then I'm going to click select and then I'm going to click that first Ooh. let's try that one again make sure I've got select selected there we go so we see a box pops up here and then click that so now instead of following the link it's highlighted the whole thing and this is something interesting about the whole of this page. Actually, what it says is the whole of this box, both the text, the image, this text here, and this is a link. The whole thing is a link. And I can tell that because when it's selected, I get this text here, which is actually the HTML. It's actually the, the code underneath. But I know it's a link because of this A at the end. Um, and in HTML, an A is usually a link. So then I'm going to click this next one here. I know there's more than one link on a page that I want to follow and the system's clever enough to recognize similar things so you can see the codes changed a little bit so now there are these things on the web page which in the code are called listing boxes and they've got links and so if I click done selecting so now what I've said is please look anywhere on this website for this bit of code which we know goes on each boxes and actually I want you to do that multiple times so I don't want you to do it just for the first one that you see I want you to do it for every one of these things that you find. And we could see before when we selected that information, you see how everything lit up? Each one of those is its own individual um, box. So that link. So that means each one of those red boxes, each one of those links is going to get followed. The rest of the controls we can ignore at this point. Just click Save Selector. So what we're saying is start at the root, the web um, page that we gave you, and then look for each one of these links. And then we want it to do something next. So what I'm going to do now is double click that page link. So you can see now we've got an extra step. So we go from the root through to the page link, and then we need to give it some more instructions about what to scrape. So I'm going to follow the first of these links, and I know each one of the pages has a fairly standard layout. It's a similar layout with the uh, location, that kind of stuff. And I'm going to start with a new selector. So I'm going to say add a new selector, so a new thing that I want you to scrape. And this one I'm going to call name. This time I'm going to stick with text because that's what I want to grab. And essentially I want to grab this text here. So I'm going to stay with text, click select. My little select screen pops up. And then you can see as I roll my mouse over, all of the elements on the page get highlighted. So each of the blocks of text and content, various other bits and things. So if I click up at the top here, now my text at the top is red. That's what I want. There's the bit of HTML that describes it. Click Done Selecting to drop that in there. I'm not going to select multiple this time because there's only one title. And then I'm going to do Save Selector. So now what's going to happen, we're going to go from the root, follow a link, and then grab the title. And I can keep going. So the next one I'm going to add is Location. And that's Text. Click Select. And now you can see I've got a choice. I can either just take the word Location or I can take everything. I'm going to take everything because obviously it's the that bit that I want. Yeah? But I know what's going to happen is later on I'm going to end up with location being part of the text. And we'll see that later on, but I'm not going to worry about that now. That's a bit of cleaning up that I can do later. Click Done Selecting. You can see the code's getting a little bit more complicated here. Don't worry about it being multiple again. There's only one location on the page. Click Save. And so I'm going to repeat that now for capacity text, click select, make sure I get the whole thing, done selecting, and then save, and 
let's do that for operated. Ooh, spell it properly. Operator. Click text, select. Sure, I've got the whole thing again. Done selecting. Save. Add a new one. And the next thing I'm going to grab, or the next piece of text I'm going to grab, is the address, which is this thing here. So you can see I've selected the whole thing here. And then click Done Selecting. See, let's drop that in. And click Save. So here's what's going to happen. It's going to load the page. Then it's going to follow a link. And then from each link, because if you remember we selected multiple there, it's going to take the name the location, the capacity, the operator, and the address by scraping these locations here. I'm going to take two more pieces of data here. The first piece of data I'm going to select uh, is to grab is the website for the center, which is this thing here. And actually, I'm not going to take the text for that because it's a link. So I'm going to take link and select. And you can see the A at the end. So it's going to take the website link information. And the reason that I'm doing that rather than just selecting the text is because when I come to do the same thing, add a new selector, I want to grab the inspection reports. So the website has done a really nice job here. If I follow that link through, it opens up the inspector of prisons with all the reports. Now, these pages are not as consistent as they could be. It would be too complicated to start scraping these as well. But grabbing the link, so I don't have to, I've always got it as a reference. And I can include it in whatever I'm doing would be quite handy. So I'm going to say inspection. I'm going to take link and then select. And then I'm going to roll over the top. And what that will do is instead of just taking the words inspection report, which is what the text would do, it's actually going to take the link. And again, I can see that because it says A. Click done selecting. And again, click save selector. So now I've got a whole list of things that I would like the scraper to grab for me from each of the pages. I'd like you to grab the name, the location, the capacity, um, the operator, and then the address. I'd also like it to grab the website link and the inspection report link, these two. And I could grab the telephone numbers as well if I wanted to. So all of that information. So now I'm going to land on the page. And then when I've landed on the page, it's going to follow the link. And then when it follows the link, it'll go through. So this is the site map, if you like. It's the map of instructions or the map of links to follow with that. And as you can imagine, on complicated websites, these could get quite complicated. So now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is select sitemap, and I'm going to do scrape. The first thing it says is, how long would you like me to wait for each request? So basically, if I'm going to follow more than one link, how long do you want me to wait? And then how long do you want me to wait after the page is loaded before I start to scrape the data? So basically, I'm going to wait two seconds, so 2,000 minutes milliseconds and I'm going to wait half a second before I start scraping. You can change these if you want if you know a website is slow or you know your internet connection is slow but these seem to work for me so I'm going to leave them as they are and then I'm going to click start scraping and then what happens is is a new window opens you can see here and if I'm I'm not clicking anything here I'll just leave my mouse and you'll see about every two seconds one two it starts to basically just automatically work its way through that website. And every time a new page loads, it waits half a second, and then it will start to grab that data, like the location, the capacity, and stuff like that. So again, for a really complicated website, or you'd be following lots of links, you can imagine this would take a little while. Um, but we've only got 11 of these websites to uh, go. Don't worry about this, by the way, this tracker. This is um, a little thing that I've got installed on Chrome. So we'll just wait for that. The other thing you might have noticed is that this isn't happening in the order they appear on the page. So Brookhouse was the first one on the page, and it's the last link that it goes through. Don't worry about that. The way it's written the code might not be the same as the way that um, it's presented on the page. So just rely on the com let the computer do its thing. So now it's done its scrape. You can see if I look across, I've now got a nice table here with all the various bits of information. So each of the links has followed, it's grabbed me the name and the location and stuff. And you can see, as I said before, it's grabbed the whole thing, location, colon, clapham, capacity, clapham. Um, I know I don't want that text, location, colon, get rid of them. I don't need that text, but I can clean that up later on. So this is looking pretty good. 
It's grabbed all of this information for me, put it in a nice table, which is always nice to have that sorted out. Nothing too much for me to worry about, except that as I scroll through checking it, I've noticed that there's a gap. So there's a gap in the inspection report here. It says null rather than inspection reports, and there's no link. And that's for the Vern Immigration Centre. So if I just go back through the web page and let's have a look at the Vern and let's just check I've not missed something. And uh, ah no, look, inspection reports not inspected yet. So it didn't find a link, so it's just thrown a null. That's literally there's nothing, an empty result. So a good chance here just to kind of sense check the data that you've got before having kind of checked it and it all looks good, is going back up to sitemap and then do export data as a CSV. And then I can just download that information um, and that saves it. And then once it's downloaded, I can open up in a spreadsheet and I've already got it opened up in the spreadsheet here. And you can see this is the spreadsheet. It's a comma separated values file. Um, Excel plays it really nicely. So there's my link and you can see there's that data. And so cleaning it is not a big problem here. So I know I don't want location colon in here, so I can just highlight that text do edit and find and then replace and what I'd like to do is get rid of location colon and then there's a little space in there as well and replace it with nothing and then just do replace all and you can see now that it's just taken anywhere it's found location colon space and just replaced it with nothing so that's nice and clean um, I can close that and then I can do the same thing with capacity do edit find and replace and this time instead of location I'm going to do capacity colon space replace all let's replace 11 instances all nice and clean but there's a good example in this of how um, cleaning data isn't always straightforward so let me do the same thing again but do it with the address column so I'm going to get rid of uh, do replace and instead of capacity in here I'm going to put address colon space and then do replace all and you notice it come up and said 10 instances Ooh. so click OK and close that so one of these hasn't worked and there it is there it's the the Vern that troublemaker again and you can see the reason why it's because address is spelt with one D rather than two D's so it's a good example of uh, mildly dirty data there. Not um, horribly messed up, it's not as bad as some, but you can see that occasionally things like this human error will pop in. So I can just delete that manually. So that's a very um, straightforward example of scraping content. Um, most websites are not that organized. There'll be little quirks in terms of the way that it works, but Web Scraper, as you start to dig into it, you'll find there are ways around that, and there's some good tutorials. So that's webscraper.io, a nice Chrome extension. Works on PC, works on Mac, if you've got Google Chrome. Um, as I say, not the only web scraper that's around. Um, there are some that do things better, some that don't think, do things as well. But if we're looking for a sort of brief introduction as to how we might make our lives a little bit easier, so instead of doing a lot, cut and paste, get computer programs to scrape that data for us, Web Scraper is not a bad place to start.